and the shuttle, the space shuttle. A lot of them all trained right here. John Glenn got dressed right in that room, which is a recording studio now. And we will end up in the centrifuge room where you can literally sit in there and take pictures. I can't hear you. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be using the <laughs> You'll notice it just says C for centrifuge. The floors don't have numbers. The next one we're going on is operations. This is what it is. And this was in a time, um, they had a chest in the building. There's catacombs under here. And somebody put this in a chest with all kinds of little artifacts. This might have been the first person spun. Wow. There was no body in it, though. So. They're, they're getting it ready for an event here. That's all the Okay, so that's why you're seeing all this stuff. There's like a bar mitzvah or something. So we can go in there. This is the room where they used to bring actual space parts in. There's actually a big hoist out front. You can see it when you leave the building. It's got a big crane. Outside the building, when he came in, you saw the Doppler Tower. There was no Doppler Tower there. There was a big tower. They would put space astronauts at the bottom and shoot them in the air because they had to get ready and train that if they had uh, the seat ejected for their own safety. And they had high explosives on their butts. So they take the seat had this thing. They'd sit a minute, they'd put these explosives on it, and would shoot them into the sky. And they had a little parachute or something? No, it was like some kind of thing that held it so it didn't go off the rack and it shot them really hard and fast. They were very brave, and they were all pilots. They were decorated fire pilots from Korea. So now we're going to go into here. This, it wasn't decorated like this for astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> for landing this is the largest one in the world. Look at this wheat basket. It was lined in copper, so that it wouldn't be like cotton candy in here with any static. The, the, the whole grounds were, it was crawling with spotted shoes. This was the largest mercury battery in the world. They, the Cravero brothers cut that all up like that, and they made it a bar. I would have done that too. So, um, the screens went out here, but people had like Super Bowl parties here and weddings, and it didn't have curtains, it was lined in copper. The copper looked just like that white one. This is a simulated space capsule. Now, this thing would spin this way, this way, and this way all at once, 42 oh. times a minute, with an assignment. And they would have a camera on you at all times. Yeah. And when uh, Sam Cravero brought this bought this building, it was all in chronological order, the complete history of the building. And I got to see footage of Alan Shepard being tested with somebody else. He survived the test. The other guy kept pulling the ripcord. So he must have had a constitutional, I mean, his stomach was a little incredible because so many people would just puke their guts up on this. And he also tested fighter pilots right, right into the 1990s. You'll also see some of these things laying around. These are what's going, these are the walls to these things. And some will have three cameras, some will have two cameras, and some will have one camera. Can you guess why? Because one camera was Mercury, two cameras was Gemini, Gemini means twins, and three was Apollo. This is, these are the guys that went to the moon, and Apollo 8 took the picture of the Earth. It all happened right here. <clears throat> they left all this behind. These screws had to be so precise that if they even had a little bit of extra tightness in them, they had to throw them out. Everything had to be precise. So a lot of mechanics in the area got tubs and tubs of screws and things that they loved. One of my friend's father was one of the recipients of that. They got these tubs of stuff here. Um, the floor was not this shiny. They did this for parties and things. Um, it had, I'll show you this, on this side here, the railroad would come right into this building with all these parts on it because they couldn't put them on trucks where the trucks would fall over. So it has its own railroad. It has its own airport. And the president of the United States is coming. That's the door for the train and the railroad right there. 
This is also a fallout shelter. Hmm. That's the machinery that would spin it. Um, there was only, at the time when they got this building, it was about five years ago, there was only two of the original seven astronauts alive, Scott Carpenter and John Glenn. <coughs> Scott Carpenter gave a speech up there. He hated this thing. <laughs> he did. And he's the only astronaut and aquanaut. He's gone to depths in, in the ocean and no one's gone. Um, there's also, they would have a scientist monitoring everything up there, almost like a disco, you know, where the DJ would be, but that's not what it is. That was a scientist up there. How did they get up there? Uh, there's a stairway that goes up into yeah. that, too. Um, and the inside was not black, it was white. It was like this, but it was all copper. It was all copper. Why so, was it copper? Uh, so did, Why was it white? Uh, white was just a reason, because it was done by the Navy, and everything in here was gray and white. Um, and the reason why it was copper is, copper doesn't have static. <clears throat> and when you make like cotton candy, it would do the same thing. And this would just be a big static ball. So nothing had static. There is footage that we have of this thing spinning. It looks quite horrifying. <laughs> just imagine there was a monkey in there first. There's also spiders, goats, cats, oh, dogs. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why they would spin a goat. Yeah, I don't know. But they were monitoring their hearts. hearts. Yeah. Well, they have a spin off because it's about G force. <laughs> so if you're in outer space, it's just short of being weightless while you're doing these things. Turn into a ball. I guess that they're just, they want to see if they can make a web, if they're cognizant. They did all these different tests. Goldfish, I, all these, there's a whole list of the things they spun. I'm hoping they weren't like cruel little kids. Oh, let's spin this one. <laughs> this is just decoration. Water line. An artist left these behind and they had nowhere to put them, so he left them up there. They, have the, they had a wedding uh, convention in here where a bride came out of the ceiling. <laughs> they had, they've had all kinds of really, the most wild one I ever attended was this millionaire came and he booked the whole place with the general who used to run the place and his job for his life was near-death experiences <laughs> that he would put himself through it. <laughs> wow. So can you imagine going home like, honey, what'd you do today? Well, I almost died twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> but, but what they had was he booked a building. Is he still alive? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, no, uh, apparently he's fairly <laughs> famous, everybody knows him, I don't even remember his name, but, but the reason why they booked it was they had UFO abductees here, which was pretty cool. They came from all over the country. I got to talk to them, I really believe that they experienced them, because the little creatures seem all the same in their stories, pretty much. So, <laughs> so um, all right, now we're going to go to um, upstairs. Oh, yeah, we're going to show you the world's largest computer at the time. Anthony's going to open that. How about the uh, tick marks on the floor? Is that just to test speed? They might have been filming it from the top. Yeah, right, right, this yeah. guy might have been able to say, oh, they're going out of service. Right, right. Then you get in there. It looked like George Jetson furniture. It was pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> now, this was everything in here. You can come in here. This was the world's largest computer at the time. And these panels on the wall are like little tiny cells in your cell phone now. <laughs> the technology in here ranges from the Korean War all the way to the 1990s. Have you worked your... No, no, I'm, I'm a recording artist, but oh, I like yeah. the building, so I've nice. I hung out. It's <laughs> yeah. a good call. So this is uh, the technology. Um, I mean, you know, those speakers were very, very hip at the time. And if you look at the dials here, they're little, little hand pieces on them. This is all Korean War vintage, high technology. And then it got more progressive. What's really cool is they left a couple of the posties up. Because they just say, you know, put red wire with blue wire. with green. I mean, they were testing their heart rates. You know, making sure they didn't pass out. And it was very important to know that because they had to know how much the human body could withstand because you're going up into space. But imagine this. We went from point zero from 1962 to 1969. We literally put a guy on the moon with primitive slide rule stuff. You know, he didn't just pick up a phone. You know? 
And um, there's records in there. We have no idea what they mean. There's just binders and binders of stuff. The floors are hollow because they're always running wires. They were just always doing these experiments. Um, and then, like I said, fighter pilots were testing in here until the 1990s. It has its own airport. It has lots of things. We have the original um, capsule that Alan Shepard was tested in. And ironically, it is a flying saucer. <laughs> Um, and um, that was only used once. And then the, the History Channel brought that back here. It was laying in a yard at the Smithsonian Institute with mm. weeds growing through it. So, all right, now I'm going to take you upstairs into the Centrifuge Command Center. Here is the workers' entrance. The other one is like the presidential entrance. There's another elevator that only the, you know, the dignitaries would use. Is that one? Does that one have a couch on it? No. <laughs> but this was designed to hold heavy equipment and stuff, experimental stuff. Yeah. Now the next room you're going to want to take pictures in. Five minutes from this room. What do you say? Yeah. yeah. When these guys came out of this thing, they were like ready to puke, but they were trained not to. And then these guys would say, how do you feel? They're all oh, worried, you know, everything's fine. And then they said when they left, they would just be throwing up all over the place. Um, their bodies were so messed up that they're, they looked like they had chicken pox because their fluids were just all messed up. They were going 42 times a minute. G-force, you know, like, like it's almost supersonic. So that's, this is where they would, uh, that's one of the labs where they would dress the astronauts and test their hearts and things like that. You'll, and again, you'll still know, it, it, it was all gray in here. They, we made it more of a rock and roll room where the, the artists wait for their turn to play their part. Now we're going to go into this room. Now when you would watch on television, you know, the countdown and all, this is a recreate, this is the actual one, and in Florida, they would recreate this very same room. This was monitoring all their hearts. A lot of this is left exactly as was. Here's the flying saucer with Alan Shepard in it. See, it's, it's a flying saucer that flies side, through sideways. That's the gurney that they would be put on if they were like really ready to pass out. And this is the capsule that they would test in. Right now it's set up for a fighter pilot. Nice. Not an astronaut. If you guys want to go in here and take pictures for your Facebooks, you can. <laughs> you wear the helmet. Just be extremely, extremely careful. Because there's only one step here. I would say come in two at a time. And be very careful. Mm -hmm. Keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> and they have, they have a new room they're working on. Yeah. That? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Do not faint. <laughs> Just be careful. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Wonder what radiation or interesting, Pat. Good call. Good observation. That'd be helpful. I want to get the next batch of people. That's very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, nice. I think I got one. Yes. Again. Can you get the